Welcome to Career Insights. The Career Insights series features local industry professionals engaged in conversation with students and recent graduates about career planning and job opportunities in Polk County, Florida. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're so happy to have you here. I'm Sharon Kokanowski. I'm the current interim uh, director for the education department at Polk State College. I'm also the field coordinator for the um, BS programs here at, in, at the bachelor level. Um, we're just excited at the prospect and idea of having many of you come join us in the near future to become educators. One thing you want to remember is that you can definitely earn a teaching degree, which is something we definitely need right now, but education has so many other opportunities um, aligned with that. So um, we hope to see you soon. I do want to quickly introduce before we get started, uh, some of our great team members that are here to help us today. From the early childhood area, you will be meeting um, Mrs. Hazelwood and wave your hand, there she is. Okay and Mrs. Roops, and Welcome. they'll be talking to you about early childhood. And then Mrs. Price, wave your hand, there you go. And Mrs. Hurt will be speaking to you about the bachelor side of the program. Uh, one thing that's exciting here at Polk State is that we do have a linear pathway from beginning to end, and you'll learn more about that. I do also yeah, want to okay. just briefly mention the fact that if you have younger siblings, some of you may even already be in the elite program at your high school. Um, I know Bartow, Haines City and Ridge Community have that program. But if you have younger siblings who are interested in education, ask them to make sure they find out about the elite program that can help them work their way through high school and come straight into the education program. So at this time, I don't want to hold things up at all. Let's go ahead and move on to um, Mrs. Hazelwood and Mrs. Roops and let them share some about the early childhood program. My name is Chantel Roops and I have the privilege of serving as the child care training coordinator for Polk, Highlands and Hardy counties. So basically what that means is that anyone that wants to work in a preschool in Polk, Highlands and Hardy has to come through our program and be certified. So anyone working uh, with infants all the way through after school children have to be certified through the Department of Children and Families and that's exactly what we do. Our classes mm -hmm. range from teaching the rules and regulations with regards to ratios, to knowing how to change a diaper. But really the program is just an intro into knowing, um, knowing how to work with children, but then also a long and fulfilling career in education. So if uh, some of our high schools actually have our programs, um, but if you are ever interested in working in a preschool, uh, with young children, um, I'll be sure to see you. My name is Deborah Metcalf Hazelwood, and I'm the Applied Education Coordinator in the AS degree program in early childhood education. Um, and there are several things that you can do within our program that I feel um, are important to share with you because um, the credentials that are out there with the state definitely help you open up more opportunities as far as this career field. So within our degree, we have two credentials. The first credential is the Florida Child Care Professional Credential or the FCCPC. And we all know that everything's thrown around as acronyms and they're everywhere out there. So um, if, if you hear the FCCPC, it is the credential for birth to five is the one that we offer. Um, it consists of four college credit courses. Each of them are three credit hours. Um, and what can you do with that credential? That credential can open up the opportunity for you to teach in, in voluntary pre-K, which a lot of people would like to do. You need to have that credential to teach with the school board as far as Head Start and pre-K are concerned. And then child care centers out there have requirements to have 
so many staff members that have that credential to meet the requirements in law. So that's definitely like your next step up. You come in and you do the state mandated training with Chantel's program. You can be a teacher in the classroom, but to open up more opportunities for you, the next step would be that credential. Uh, we also offer the director credential and the director credential consists of um, taking one additional course. Now you have to have that FCCPC in order to get the director credentials. So you're looking at a total of five courses, but the director credential has one course that you take and that would allow you to operate a childcare center anywhere in the state of Florida. Um, the credentials are actually issued by the Department of Children and Families, but we provide the educational requirements here at the college. So with the director credential, you can actually own and operate your own child care center, which we have a lot of people who pursue that, or you can work as a director in an existing child care center that may be faith-based and owned by a church or owned by an individual or corporation. So you have those opportunities available to you as well. Um, in addition to that, the AS degree itself um, is designed for those courses to be a part of that program. So by the time you finish those two credentials, you've actually earned 15 credit hours towards your AS degree in early childhood education. And we quite often have students that go on because they've got such a good start um, to, uh, completing a degree at that point that they just want to keep going. Um, so the AS degree in early childhood, um, it is a 60 credit hour program. Um, and that degree is actually a stepping stone and a pivotal point for you to go on to the bachelor's degree should you decide to do that. Um, all of our courses articulate, the full degree articulates into the bachelor uh, the bachelor's degree in early childhood education. So you can con continue straight through our programs and move right on up to that level. Um, so um, in talking, Chantel and I wanted to not stand up here and just talk to you the whole time and, and you know, it'd be more like a lecture or something like that. So we decided we wanted to give you an idea of what it would be like to be in uh, a college classroom here in our programs. Um, and the fact that it's really very student centered um, and that we want you to be interactive. So you're not going to just be sitting and listening to a professor who's going to lecture for an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half, however long your class would be. Um, we try to make this the case with our online classes as well as our classes that are held in the classroom. So even in online classes, we try to have interactive components where you're working with other students on projects or discussions or things like that. So today we created an activity for you. Uh, we feel like it's fun, of course, because um, that's, early childhood. that's that's right, it's early childhood. <laughs> and one of the keys to getting young children involved and really getting that intrinsic motivation from them is appealing to that fun side. So that side that incorporates play into everything that we're doing. So today we have come up with, um, with the context really is that we are going to talk about how we have certain aspects of lesson plans that usually develop and they're related to themes. So usually you will have like a shape of the week or the month or however long your themes go. You'll have a shape, you'll have a color, you'll have a letter. Basically, we have a couple of, of learning goals in mind here. We The first one would be letter recognition. So we want children to be able to recognize that letter C. Uh, and then also sound recognition. So we want them to understand that C most of the time, not always, we know how English is, uh, but most of the time it's going to make the K sound. So um, what we would do at this point is we would try to take this lead in from the book that we've read and we would use something that we like to refer to as intentional teaching. So we would have planned this already. We would know exactly what we were doing. We're not just walking in the room, picking a book off the shelf, reading it, and then trying to throw some activities together. 
We're going to use this book as a lead in. We will have already planned activities that can be everywhere in the classroom that will help immerse them in that letter C. So, for example, in the block center, we can add um, we can add cows and we can have them build a barnyard out of the blocks so they can build a pen for the cows. Um, we can also add cars and have them build a racetrack for their cars to run on. Uh, in dramatic play or home living center, we could have food that starts with the letter C, corn, carrots, you know, I'm saying all the healthy ones. There's some non-healthy <laughs> ones too. But anyway, we would have all of these foods in there that start with the letter C. We could also have a designated chef. So that chef, we would talk about how that word actually starts with the letter C. So what we're doing is we're immersing children in this concept of this letter in everywhere that they're playing. Um, that way we have uh, much better chances of them having that meeting our goal of letter recognition and sound recognition. And we would also need to assess that at some point. So if you have a goal or an expected outcome, you want to assess that in some way. So that might mean uh, waiting a day or two and then having them um, try to pick out some things that start with the letter C. Um, and see how well they're, they're doing with that. So that gives us an idea of, is this really working for them? One of the main reasons to chart words is even though children are preliterate and they can't read, they still need to be seeing those words in print continually. That's one reason why we label centers, we label center areas, we label items that are on the shelf. So seeing words in print is really important for them to make that connection once again they're seeing that letter C in every one of these words. So um, charting answers is a really a good addition to an activity like this that you might do with them. So um, we created our own uh, scavenger hunt here in the classroom. So we went out, if we expected you to do it, we went out and we found C items in the classroom. And one of the reasons for doing that is because I want to talk to you about something. It's a concept that um, is actually in the Beyond Centers and Circle Tongue uh, curriculum, and it's called a sound table. So these items that we went out and found uh, can be put on a table and left out in one area of the classroom so that children are seeing those. They can still interact with them but they can also get excited and go up to it and be like, oh, that's a cow. That one starts with C. You know, that extends this process even more for them. So if you have a sound table that allows them to have that visual and also be able to interact with those items, again, it just still continues to reinforce our letter C. So I'm going to have Chantel, I'm going to turn the screen around. She's going to show you what we put on our sound table from the things that we found in our classroom. We went scavenging in our classroom and we found a bunch of good things. So I'm going to try to remember how much of this is new. I think most of it, except the cups. Everybody pretty much had cups, so we found some cups too. So we'll put that one over here. But right here, we have some clothing, right? In our dramatic play area. We have a candle. We have a cow and a car, some cauliflower, corn, cookies, the real and the fake. We have a cupcake. We have a car. And right over here, we have some colored pencils, a crayon, a bean bag with the upper and lower case C's, some cheese, a watering can over here. Um, a crown, I shall wear it. And then over here, we actually have in our classroom, we have these little um, containers with the letter C in them that are just out all the time. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have a bottle of water with you? Did any of you think about a cap? We already had camera. What about a 
camel and a cat. And we even have a little puzzle piece right here with the letter C. Now I would challenge you for the rest of the day as you go around the class, as you go about your day or around the classroom, be observant of how many other things you can come up with the letter C. I was talking to my children about this activity and for two days, my daughter would come randomly with the word, with, with C words. And it was interesting to see the progression of thought and she's 11 years old, the progression of thought from the simple C words to two days later, she was coming up with more elaborate C words. So um, this is an activity that no matter what age, we can all, you know, our brains um, just enjoy that, uh, that interaction. It enjoys the challenge. And so um, if you come up with something really awesome, email me. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear it. So one last thing I was going to add was one of the things that's on our sound table is a cheetah. And this one, even though it's a cat as well, um, that's a big word for young children. But I've noticed there are teachers that want to shy away from those bigger words, and they really shouldn't. Um, children can learn about nocturnal animals. They can learn about what the difference between a cheetah and a um, uh, different types of cats are. Um, so don't hold them back in your thinking. So don't be afraid to have some of those things that might seem like they would be difficult, but when you have their attention and they are immersed in learning like this, quite often you can help them reach levels that you probably would have never expected. Um, and the only other thing I was gonna add was the fact that we have like a cupcake and cookies here, having something that's actually the real thing because we have a lot of plastic versions of things it's always good to extend that and have the actual real thing there because they can tell you so much more about it. You can talk about what it feels like, what it tastes like, um, a little bit more detail about what it looks like. So involving all of the senses as well. So we hope that we've been successful in giving you this thought of, you know, don't just sit around and talk about the letter C at a table. Um, but create an environment where they are completely immersed in it so that hopefully um, you're going to be able to meet some really high goals with them. So I think that's all we have. Right? Yeah. It was great being with you all this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. Everybody give them a round of applause. All right.